we'll wait for Arthur. So, since he was there before. Let me see, Arthur was here, so I, he had a question and I wanted to address it. In any case, what you see here is uh, exactly those uh, elementary bits of uh, intertwiners, yes? So this is... Uh, What's that? The oh, the screen raised it, yes, absolutely. Uh, this is a screen. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so uh, let me make an overview of what we, uh, what we did, uh, what we saw last time. Oh. Okay, sure. So, uh, let's see what we have is, uh, is uh, what we have graphically as KLM, yes, is three arrows, V to the K, so S, SLN acts on V, which is C to the N. Yes, that's a standard space. And then this is a standard, a standard intertwiner, right? K, L, and M enter. V to the K, V to the M, V to the L enter. And uh, nothing exits. So, so this is an invariant. Uh, this is, uh, which is uh, one for SLN. So this simply computes determinants. You put here, for instance, if this is, uh, v, this is uh, SL3, then uh, you put something like uh, uh, E, let's say SL4 to make it more interesting. If this is 2, 1, 1, then you'd put here E1, wedge uh, E3, here E2, here E4, and this would give you something like, like uh, plus minus 1, a, a sign, yes, in this case which is exactly the wedge product of all four, or zero. And uh, if you have uh, general representations, not the generators, you have uh, some uh, symmetrizers, so these, these curved things on the edge are the projection, the projection onto the... Uh, uh, Just one second here. So those would be the projections. Huh. Okay, this is, I think somebody, I, I forgot it here. Uh, oh, this is a local, oh, this is not mine, sorry. Mine does work. 
So you have a, a projection onto the irreducible representation. You see, you have tensor products of the generators and the projection onto the irreducible. These are the three projections which are on the side. And uh, yes. So you see, this is, for instance, one such projection. Do you see what comes out is one, then two, and then three? Yes? Is this part, uh, if, if there are any questions, please ask. So, so this is a, a projection from, these are the ones studied by, uh, by Hermann Weil. You take V to the wedge one to some power, K, uh, A tensor, so this is to some tensor power A, tensor V to the wedge two, tensor power B, tensor V to the wedge three, to the tensor power C, and uh, you write this as wires, you know, one, 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 and then some wires here, two, two, and some wires here, three, three. So this is, and then you put a symmetrizer, which is a young diagram symmetrizer, and you get a young, young diagram. So you get the um, fundamental representation. I mean, the irreducible representation. And what you have then is some um, regions. And these regions are uh, each of a, of a certain kind. Yes, you see in this one, if you count from the left, for instance, this one is one to one. This one is, uh, so this one is one to one around the black point. This one is two, one, one. This one is uh, uh, one, one, two. Yes? So what I was saying was that around every point then, uh, I mean, this separates into regions. It's very much like, uh, if you want in something physical, uh, ferromagnetism or so, where things uh, separate into plates. So in each of these, you have only one kind of intertwiner at its adjoint as you can see. So here you have only one, one, two, and it's, uh, and it's adjoint in this region. Yes? So since the quantum field theory is built out of such intertwiners, uh, you, this is the, uh, so you always have a linear combination of these things. Yes, which, uh, which uh, build uh, two-dimensional quantum field theory. And now, you can see here you have separators between these. So these is, this is what I call last time phases. Yes, so the intertwiners are the same kind in a region, very much as I say, like the ferromagnetism also. So you have these, uh, these regions, uh, they have separators like this. And uh, the problem is what is the shape of those separators? What's the shape of these regions? That's exactly what was done in physics. 50 years ago for the easing model uh, for ferromagnetics. So, and uh, the nice part is that uh, those uh, separators between regions uh, come entirely, uh, and they would come if Mathematica, Mathematica seems to have a problem now, uh, which it does from time to time. So interactive geode is the one we want. And uh, once it has such a thing, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's hopeless, so we want uh, interactive geode. And uh, we should uh, look again at Mathematica. Uh, 
and we look here at interactive geode. Uh, so, in any case, the idea is the following. Let me um, uh, show it here. So it's not affected by. So we have a, a uh, we have this uh, triangulation. These are will be our special hyperplanes. So in this case, the lines, and then we give every point a lift. So we uh, we uh, we have for uh, for every edge we have some uh, some. Uh, uh, multiplicity. So, for instance, here, if we have a 1, a 1, and a 1 for SL3, remember that V tensor V tensor V contained a trivial representation. So, so this gives something an intertwine of this form. And this one we call the blade. And the blade now is going to, uh, to make, give, uh, produce a lift. So this lift, so it lifts up exactly like the, uh, like the uh, uh, rooftop. Yes, and here we produced the uh, last time the vector which gives uh, that that's some variant of the, some generalization of the vial vector rho in each direction. So, so a blade like this produces uh, some bend. Yes, and if you want to compute the, the amount of bending, uh, remember that the Gaussian curvature is computed in the following way. You put your, uh, your vectors. So here, these vectors are the normals to each, to each slope. Yes, so in general, you have here six slopes, yes? So there are vectors normal to each slope, yes? And you take these vectors and you put them on the unit sphere in the origin. And the area here is a Gaussian curvature. The area on the unit sphere. That was uh, the view of Gauss. Now, that's exactly what, uh, what we have here. Do you see uh, if we... Uh, if we take uh, in the we look in the two dimensional case as we showed last time let's concentrate just on the curvature we bend we 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 lift the uh we we add some lift here and uh we show the, so wait, we bend first, the, we bend the, uh, um, the triangles by adding a height, and the height is, com is computed exactly as we said, by some potential, yes? This part clear, if you need, uh, if there are any, Okay, so once we have lifted this, once we have curved this base, you see it's curved here, uh, there's obviously some Gaussian curvature at this point, yes? And here's how we visualize it. We raise the normals at every point, yes? Do you see these are the normals, there are six uh, triangles around each point. For each of them, we get one of these corners. So one of these normals, yes? So we may uh, lift a lot, you see, like this. Then we put also the missing parts, the simplices and so, uh, the border, 
And what we get is exactly the picture that we had before. Yes, so the amount of, uh, uh, I mean, the, the shape, remember that in each of these eyes of the honeycomb, you had a different uh, phase. So you had a different type of intertwiner. And the type of intertwiner was exactly the coordinate of the corresponding point in the base. So if you were here, the coordinate of this point, for instance, this is here three, this is four zero zero at the top, four zero zero at the top, zero four zero down, uh, zero zero four here, and somewhere in the middle, you see they have some two, uh, some four, so somewhere in the middle you'll have a 211, which is exactly here, U211, yes? The intertwine of type 211. So this is in this, in this upper region here, you have 211s. Yes, and the length of these edges here, so which is a number, let me, let's look again, I think this was in uh, preview maybe, or in uh, Adobe Acrobat now, uh, let's see, not this, so it was in Adobe Illustrator, I think, yeah, the, do you see the number of things here? There's a curvature along an edge, and here you have six blades, so the six blades became length six. Yes, so they they moved apart exactly the multiplicity of the respective blade, yes? And the conservation relation that we had before, do you see the sum of these two the things at the top is a girth, the width of this hexagon, and is equal to the sum of the two things at the bottom. Yes? So the sum of these, the length of these two edges at the top, the length of these two edges at the top is the same as the sum of the length of these two edges at the bottom for a hexagon, since the angles are the usual ones. Yes, so you see here, for instance, 4 plus 1, and here 2 plus 3. Yes, the mathematical theorem is the following, that any intertwiner is a linear combination of these. In any, uh, these intertwiners are described by, uh, by a honeycomb, which separates, the various, uh, which separates the various regions into uh, intertwiners of the same kind. Yes? Uh, in this case, for instance, do you see in one of these regions that all the intertwiners are exactly of the same kind? Yes, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the width, the, the width of, the, so the angles of this honeycomb, this honeycomb uh, uses exactly, is based exactly on the roots of SL3. So, uh, the center, uh, so um, the length of the edges here, yes, uh, are also, so there's an alternative encoding. These honeycombs are, by the way, in the literature, and it's known that the number of, of these honeycombs is exactly the number of intertwiners between the respective representations. This is, this was a theorem of, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, Zelevinsky and uh, uh, of this was a theorem of Zelevinsky and others. So this is the fact that the number of such honeycombs, yes, is exactly the number of intertwiners. So they reduced it to the to the little Richardson theorem, which was one of the big theorems in the 1960s. It took, they say, 20 years to prove. For curvature, do you see the gray thing here? Yes, the gray honeycomb at the top. Look at the gray honeycomb at the top, yes? This encodes exactly, so you put a number of blades. So you take this picture. Thank you, so finally a question. So you, you take this picture, and let's see, well, how many edges do you have at the top? One, yes? So this says multiplicity one, do you see? You rewrite the length of the edges. Uh, here, the next one is uh, four here, 
Yes? This is one. And uh, uh, oh, this is, this is uh, bigger. So this is not for three by three, but for four by four. So this is a picture. Yes? So you put the multiplicities, which are one here vertically, you have four. Do you see I'm going to put just the ones at the top? Four. Yes? And uh, uh, three, this, do you see here you have one, two, three, four. Here you have one, two, three. Here you have two, three, two. And at the bottom you have one and one, two, three, four, five. So you have one and five. Yes, so now you see the, so at the top you should have four plus three. And at the bottom, you have one plus six, actually. So you see here that one plus six is equal to four plus three. One plus four is equal to three plus two. So they satisfy this conservation, which is geometrically uh, obvious. The statement is that these are linear combinations. So the way you go from this picture of multiplicities to that one, yes, this picture to that one is exactly the one described uh, by the uh, geode. Yes, so you take, uh, you, you put some bend exactly as I was describing last time to the, peak, to the triangles, do you see here? The amount of bend that you put is exactly this. So you make here the bend four. The bend is measured in the following way. You have uh, two, uh, two hyperplanes intersecting, uh, and uh, the, there's a jump in the, length, in the normal when you move it across the, so uh, for instance here, for this edge, there's a jump in the normal, yes? So you take this jump in the normal, you make the height here equal to one for both of them. And for this one also, the height should be equal to one. And then you measure the distance here, and the distance here is a bend for height one, yes? And this is exactly the multiplicity of, uh, of the blades here. So, so here you'd have, uh, for instance, four. And uh, you have this way, this bend produces this honeycomb, which is uh, exactly uh, is a discrete form of uh, the Gauss indicator which measures curvature, you simply go perpendicular to the bottom. A any, any other, are there any other questions? Well, if we have definitions, but I, I don't have time uh, to, uh, how much time do, I, do we have to write uh, uh, so this was just a review of the last time. The definition is the following. You have regions with intertwiners. We have discussed these, remember, in August when I came. You have regions with the same kind of intertwiners. Yes, for every region you have, every region is in the eyes of a honeycomb. So the, the definitions will be in the book, but uh, so these lengths are arbitrary. The, the honeycombs exist in the mathematical literature. They are used by Tao and others. And each region is filled with intertwiners. Exactly, you have uh, uh, hexagons, so the intertwiners are sent, the, the uh, hexagons, so are uh, centered exactly around the, uh, uh, they're centered around the uh, root lattice, the root lattice. That's 
the, the relation to the curvature, that's a question. The relation to the curvature is the following. You take, uh, a, uh, you take the uh, simplex, so this is a simplex with coordinates n, 0, 0, and 0, n, 0, 0, 0, n, in general, in any number of dimensions. And you also put all the special, hyperpla special hyperplanes which are the ones of the form x, the sum of x s, uh, the sum of x i, i in s I, is in z. Yes, for any subset. So these hyperplanes are, for instance, here, x1 plus x2, this, if these are coordinates 1, 2, 3, 4, x1 plus x2 is an integer. These are these hyperplanes. You intersect all of them. Okay, and, uh, and then you take the generators, which I have described exactly in the week uh, before. You remember the blades. Yes, you take the uh, system of uh, fine roots, and you put as blades uh, the span of n minus 2 of these vectors. That's exactly what we did in the week before. Remember that these are, are these defined for you. We had them defined very nicely. That was what we did the week before. Now, um, for these, these separate the space. So if you put every surface spanned of co-dimension 1 spanned, this separate the, the space into what we call plates. And for such a plate, we took a vector. Uh, this was on Monday. This vector was a variant which, was, uh, which we defined at the blackboard, which was a variant of the vial vector rho. And then for every point here, P, so we took this as the origin, for every vector V here, for every point, we took the quantity v in a product with rho. Yes, this is a linear function, and it gives us a height, that v in a product with rho, or rather minus v in a product with rho. Yes, so this is a height. That's exactly what you saw in that program as a height. So this here is a height. You see, this is a height here, and we can uh, bend it some more so you can see. Do you see that if you, if you move one of the vertices, you add or subtract height from that vertex? So the first theorem is that uh, any, uh, uh, any function, which is the main theorem here, in this part is that any function which is linear on these shards, on the intersection, I mean the complement of these hyperplanes, and so is linear except on the special hyperplanes, and which is continuous. This is its height. Do you yeah, see? The between, the vertices. between? These, vertices. these vertices. Each vertex becomes uh, one of these hexagons. So the vertex, the vertices have coordinates, as I was saying. So the vertex of coordinates 2, 1, 1, these are coordinates of vertices. Yes, and the vertex of coordinate 2, 1, 1 will expand by this, by this uh, uh, geode construction this will expand exactly to an eye of a honeycomb. Each vertex becomes the eye of a honeycomb. Two one one. No, two one one is a coordinate of the vertex in the simplex. Yes. So if this is 
300, and this is 0, 3, 0, so for this particular example, 0, 0, 3, this vertex would have coordinates 1, 1, 1. What's that? Here, this vector v. The v is just a position of an arbitrary point. This, this is giving you a slope. So this is for any v. This is a map. v goes into this. This is a height. v does not exist on this triangle. v, v is any point on the triangle. Yes, any point v, for instance, here in the triangle. The height, for as I said, for every blade, for every generator, which is a generator like this in this particular case, this is a generator, yes? We take the inner product with this vector, which is a vial vector rho. So if we have, for instance, uh, let's say that we normalize this to have length one. So then here you would have zero. In this direction, you would have the inner product here is 1. Uh, the inner product here would be 2 for this point. The inner product here, do you see this inner product with that? That's 1 half here. Here it's 1. Here it's 1 half. Here it's 1. Yes? So similarly, in this region, we use this other vector, and we'll have again one, two, three. So this is a linear function. One half, one half here. OK, everything with minus. So this gives exactly the shape that you see here. Do you see this gives, if, if we had only one of them, this would give this height. The height is the following. For every blade, a blade which was defined last week is exactly, uh, is obtained from, uh, from a system of affine roots. For every blade, there is a height. And then you add the heights for every blade. So this height is viewed as a linear function. So you put, you, def you, put, you define the, you need a certain intertwiner, right? So the simplex uh, alone is not enough. You have a certain intertwiner. So what do you refer to define a height? I don't see that. I don't see the triangle, the multiple, but so far I've seen defining. Well, look, if you take such a blade, if you take a blade like this, yes, it gives you a height function. If you take a superposition of blades, it gives you the sum of those heights. So what we are trying here is to describe an intertwiner. The intertwiner is described in several equivalent ways. One of them is to... Uh, to uh, okay, we start with the intertwiner. In what form? In representing theory, you have this intertwiner. You, how? I mean, you should give me one form of the intertwiner, and I'll put it in this form. The honeycomb, the honeycomb form. OK, very good. The honeycomb form, yes. And then how do we translate that form to this? To this. Yes, that's, uh, that's uh, exactly. So if you have the honeycomb, then uh, uh, the edges here, so one rather indirect way is you have uh, some length of edges. So let's look at the honeycomb. So you're saying that this is the, uh, this should be our starting point, yes? The intertwiner in this form, right? Okay, very good. So then we have a number of blades, do you see here? These are the multiplicities. We mark the multiplicities on the triangle. Do you see the multiplicity at the top? is this little segment at the top. Do you see one here? The multiplicity on this one is four. Do you see four? Yes, this is four. Multiplicity down here is four. Yes, so these two figures are perpendicular to each other. Okay, so you translate the honeycomb to blade. 
two blades. No, the conservation relation is automatic. Sure, I mean, you have multiplicities here which satisfy automatically conservation because you see here that the, num the length of these two edges must be the same as the length of these two edges at the top. Yes, so 4 plus 3 is equal to 6 plus 1. That's automatic in the honeycombs. Yes, then the theorem is that no, then the theorem is that if you, have, uh, if you have such multiplicities which satisfy conservation relations, then they are a sum of the, with signs, with multiplicity, they are a sum of these uh, standard blades. Yes, that's one clear statement of theorem from one step to the second. Exactly. Uh, so, you, once you have a blade like this, yes, there is a potential which I have defined last time. You take the vial vector rho in each of the three, in each of the uh, regions. And then you consider that as sum of the blades? Yes, you consider that as sum of the blades, so you take the sum of the heights. The blades are automatically satisfy this conservation relation. You see, if you take here the horizontal, the, thing, uh, the number of edges up is the same as the number of edges down. Okay. We have proved that, actually. We had the proof. You, you remember? You no, no, I, pr I proved that the conservation, the reciprocal is more difficult. The reciprocal we didn't prove yet. But the direct theorem that any blade satisfies conservation, you remember that was we put the... the Coordinate circularly, and we yeah. took the inner product. Here, but no, no, no. Okay, yeah, the other one requires some work, exactly. So, so that's why I said you claim here, but you haven't proved that. No, I haven't proved that okay. because we need, uh, uh, we need some, we would need some more time. Yes, then the, the next question is okay. Now, how do you define the I'll give a seminar in the, the, you know, in January or with a proof of the thing. Uh, there is no way to compress, uh, Arthur, uh, if, you, if you can explain to somebody around 1910 perturbative quantum field theory in three one-hour lectures in a week with all the proofs, then I'll be convinced. Why if you see some proofs, but you need to clarify your statement? Exactly. So these are the statements. So, the, the ones, so these lengths become multiplicities. These multiplicities satisfy automatically conservation relations. Yes, they, then this, this will be the sum of some blades. Sum of blades. Sum of blades, exactly. And from the blades, you want to define the height. Yes, each blade has a well-defined height, exactly with this formula. There's a vector rho, which we put last time. Yes, there's a vector rho for each region. Uh, in, in the non-degenerate case, that's exactly the vial vector rho for the respective uh, system of simple roots. Remember that each plate is a, is a system of simple roots. Yes? Right. The blade was defined exactly as these were a fine roots of SL3. And in general, the higher blades were a fine a system, from, a system of a fine roots of SLN. Yeah, so do you consider the blade as some of those fine roots? Exactly. So the blades are exactly in this direction. So here uh, you have co-dimension one. So if you are in, in four, in three D, then you have four affine roots, a system of four affine roots. There are many of these. And uh, for every pair, you take a surface. You see, for every pair, you take a surface. So you get this way six surfaces, four choose two surfaces, and they separate the, uh, they separate yeah. the space into four regions. So in this case, the height will be proportional to the length from the vertices to the height. 
Uh, no, it's the inner product with this. So it's not the distance, it's the inner product with this vial vector rho in every region. Yeah, exactly, which is a very good observation because the slopes will match on this. Uh, let's see. Uh, it depends a little bit because the vial vector rho in the degenerate case is a little bit trickier to write as, I, as we described it last time. Yes, yeah, so in this particular case, uh, you see the, the function is uh, this one. Yes, so it's uh, here, it uh, goes by one half. It's exactly the inner product of this. So it's exactly the projection onto the vial vector rho. So it's a linear function. That's very important. So this height is a linear function. Okay, we'll have three yeah. We'll have three you want In every region, it's a linear function. So here it's linear, so here it's zero, here it's one half, one, three halves, two. Here it's one half, one, three halves, and so on, one half, one. And here it's going to be, in this region it's linear. In this region it's linear, in this region it's linear. Yes, so here it would be one half plus one half, which is one. Uh, so it's not really the distance, but it's, uh, so here it's one plus one half, so here it's three halves, here it's uh, two, uh, three, and so on. Yes, so this is, this is a function, it's a linear function. It's the inner product with a vector. The vector is different in every region. It's a vial vector for this respective region. So it's this row here, this other row here, this other row in this other region. So that gives you the slope. So that makes it sloped exactly like a rooftop, you know, with the letter Y. So it's exactly like, exactly as shown here. So it's, uh, and the, uh, what it has is it has band one at every edge. Okay, so for region, you have well vector, exactly. Well exactly. Exactly. Well exactly. It's the sum of the heights. Okay. Yes, so the height is taken to be linear in the blades. Exactly, then the space is curved. And then the last question. Now I have the curvature. Yes. So previously we defined that the space is the sum of the heights. Yeah. Do you have constraints on the curvature? No. The curvature automatically satisfies the conservation relation, namely if you have, do you see, in, let me show it in this case. You have uh, six slopes. So this is, like a, this is like a Native American teepee here, yes? Six, so this one is lifted. And now, the, if you take the angle, so the change in the normal here between these two regions, do you see this one and this one? Yes, so the bend between those two regions, of the, between the normals, yes? Then you can compute it by summing this way and by summing that way, the bends. So you see you have, each of them is a sum of two, and on the hexagons, that's exactly the bend between those two opposite regions is, is a width, do you see, of this, the girth. Do you see the width of this? here, and this is equal to the sum of the length of the edges at the top and to the sum of the lengths of the edges at the bottom. So this is automatically satisfied by curvature. The only relations which are, uh, so nothing other than the fact that the, uh, 
that the curvature is, 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 is an integer, I mean the bend is an integer for every edge, the bend defined by the perpendicular like that. Uh, nothing else needs to be assumed. That's a nice part. So you have a continuous function which is uh, linear except on the special hyperplanes. And you assume, in order to get intertwiners, you need to assume that each band is positive, so that the function is convex. That's a, that's a condition. Exactly. For each point, the curvature is, I mean, this point explodes here exactly into this hexagon. Do you see this point? These are the normals, so it's not exactly the Gauss, because the Gauss uh, has radius one here, the height is one, but if, if, the, uh, if, the ver if they are very close to the vertical, then it is exactly the Gaussian curvature. The area of that, but well, the curvature that we need is really the bend on the edges. So the Gaussian curvature is the area of each of these. The area alone is not enough. What we need is a length of these edges, do you see? And the length of these edges is a bend on every edge of the original simplex. And there's a multiplicity of the respective, so you see here the bend was four, for instance. This means that it's quite bent, the other is uh, six, which is more bent, and so on. So it's a little bit more than the curvature. Yeah. So yeah, the Gaussian curvature is exactly the area, yes, exactly. Okay. But then you don't have additional characterization of the Gaussian curvature derived from Mopla as some positive functions defined on this additional Well, let's say that if you had if you had uh, an area which is given, you could take all the uh, pictures which have a given area in the eyes, in the honeycomb. So if you knew just the Gaussian curvature, you could, uh, you could, that would give you a certain class of intertwiners. What we need here, what we have here is not just, you see it's exactly this shape. What we have here is exactly this shape. Uh, you see the shape that you see at the bottom here, do you see? So the, the Gaussian curvature at every point gives you the area of that honeycomb. So for example, if you raise the height of one point. Right. Absolutely, yes. So here you can, and, and this kind of movement at, of one point alone, look, here we move just one point alone, yes, and let's look now instead at the, uh, at the top, yes, so if we have everything, and now we move just one point alone, look, what happens is that this particular eye uh, moves in and moves out, yes? This is called breathing. And I have studied this breathing, I have generating series for this breathing. It's a very, uh, it's a very interesting uh, thing, it's related to number theory and all kinds of aspects. So, uh, uh, so, this is, so you see, if you move every, uh, exactly, and what's known, you see, is that if you, uh, uh, is uh, the following. Uh, so once again, the two-dimensional thing has been studied, these, these honeycombs, not the way that in which they are filled with uh, intertwiners, by the way. It's just known that the number of honeycombs is equal to the number of intertwiners. 
That's what it is in the literature. The stuff below these, uh, these bands, yes, the, the heights, so the heights here have appeared very interestingly. They are called hives. So hives give numbers at every point. And there are, again, maybe 100 papers on hives. So it's not, it's not a subject that typically you do in, uh, in a fraction of uh, an hour. But uh, once again, so the, the, there are numbers here, which are heights, exactly our heights. And then the, what's known is that the length of the edge of the honeycomb is equal to the sum of these minus the sum of these. So they don't see the, the geode at all. And that's why they couldn't generalize it to higher dimensions. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Just integrality and convexity, yes. That uh, the dif these differences should be integers, so though it should take integer values, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the height. I mean, in the two-dimensional case, the height is known. This is the uh, it's, so it's known that the intertwiners are also labeled by hives. What's not known is the connect the geometrical connection between hives and the honeycomb which is this geode that I was showing here. And what's also not known is that these honeycombs give you actual intertwiners by filling each eye of the honeycomb with, uh, with uh, 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 particular intertwiners, exactly this. So at the beginning of the course, Arthur asked me to put something, to put a statement on the poster, which... Uh, which is unknown, and in any case, the statement on the poster is the following, that you have this honeyc the, the honeycombs describe exactly these intertwiners, and that these intertwiners, so any intertwiner can be reduced to a linear combination of these. Yeah, I want to repeat the question. Is the height proportional to this area? No, the height is not proportional to this area. The, uh, uh, the curvature at, at a point, I mean, the, uh, look, here's the, so there's an approximation that if you give that height, okay, then the Gaussian curvature is entirely concentrated at a point. Yes, so let me uh, put it back. You see, if you give this height, so this is a height here. Uh, let's put also the base so you see the height better. This is a height at various points, yes, and as you see, the curvature, the Gaussian curvature is concentrated at vertices, yes? And that Gaussian curvature is approximate, well, if you take the, the, the uh, if you make it flat enough just by scaling, the Gaussian curvature is, uh, is approximately proportional to the area. Yes. Well, this is in the classical case, of course. What we want is to do this in the higher case, which was uh, uh, the, exactly the plan for today. Uh, but uh, I don't know what uh, exactly we're going to do, but uh, certainly I had uh, prepared uh, exactly on how to, about, I mean, I had prepared this model in the high case. Now the new part, yeah, the new part, so the, the, the heights are known, the, these heights, the numbers, the heights are known. The blades apparently not. The multiplicity of blades was first used by, it, they were used by Robert Coquereau and, uh, and uh, um, Zuber, Jean-Bernard Zuber, referring to me. So, uh, and they call them O-blades. So the blades themselves as generated, these blades, 
even in the usual case, they were not used before. What was known were heights, integer heights, which, and that was called hives. Those were called hives. Yes, so if you look in the, for intertwiner hives, you'll find, uh, you'll find the number of papers. Uh, it, what's, what's also known is the, uh, are these uh, honeycombs. So the um, uh, Berenstein and Zelewinski had distances. They had something very similar to, uh, to the uh, gelfand settlin model. Uh, what is not known, what is new here, is the way, the, the fact that geometrically, the hives give you this uh, surface. So this surface has not appeared before in mathematics. And that uh, if you take the normal, and with a proviso that this normal should be, uh, should be, uh, should have uh, height one, yes? So you see they have all the same vertical height from every point. Do you see? So you do this for every point and you, you, uh, you lift the whole thing and this is the image. So amazingly, if you look from the top, these are exactly the hexagons needed. Do you see this is a picture which mixes the original triangles with the new hexagons. This one is also new. It has not appeared in the literature. And it gives a lot of results uh, on, uh, on things like uh, rank level duality and other things of this kind. Then there are the yes. And what's new again is this, this piece which I, uh, which I mailed a long time ago to Arthur. This image is entirely new. This, this uh, result that, uh, that this separates, as you know, we look together and we couldn't find. Anything like this. Yeah. You mentioned this uh, anti symmetry for our trees and the, the anti identity for all this. Right. And you mentioned that is just the, the same as the identity of theory in human curvature. Yes. Uh, I think so. Actually, I was um, I I gave it some thought for a long time, but I think that now I can see how to do it. It is done exactly by the following procedure. It is a known fact, although it's not so easy to find. You find it in a book of Chiga, for instance. It's it's not that hard to express the Riemann curvature. Uh, with four indices, to express it uh, in terms of uh, Gaussian curvature, these, uh, the sectional curvature. So it's a sectional curvature and, uh, and uh, um, the sectional curvature is exactly an area like this. You see, so what you get is that the, uh, the points of the honeycomb explode into higher dimensional versions of this uh, hexagon, yes. By the way, those higher dimensional vex versions of the hexagon, I don't have one here with me, but they have also not never appeared in the literature for some reason. So, uh, so the higher dimensional honeycombs are entirely missing. Uh, I think that they did not see the, uh, the uh, the special hyperplanes. So once you do that, then you have a, a, an n-dimensional body, but it has uh, sections. And in these sections, you can, uh, you can uh, um, compute area like this. So you can see the area, and, uh, and then you take the, so there's a formula which gives you the Riemann curvature. I haven't uh, finished checking it, but I think that's, that's the way you get it. So, in the, so you get a, a convex body and it has sections in various directions. The area of those sections is, uh, is discrete, is exactly the, uh, is uh, an approximation, but it's, it represents the, the uh, um, Gaussian curvature, sectional curvature. Hmm? No, 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 in any case, what is known Uh, 
This is a Gaussian one. That's just what one we described. This is a two-dimensional thing. Two-dimensional things don't have... Ah, for the trees. Uh, what is the connection between this and the algebraic? Uh, let me see. Uh, yes, so if you have this uh, standard uh, generator, yes, the trees, the sum of trees are these one, this is zero now, one and two, three. Uh, they are forests. And uh, uh, and similar, so the the anti-symmetrized version of one, two, three, and uh, two and one, three, two and three, one, and uh, and uh, three and uh, one, two. Yes. So these are forests with coefficient one. They are anti-symmetrized. So we have six terms here. Yes, plus some degenerate terms, which are one and two, three, uh, two and three, one, and three and one, two. And these have coefficient one half. Yes, these represent the whole lines because you have an average of one half on every line, yes? So this is the thing. In this case, there's not much room even for, ja for ja Jacobi identity. You have only anti-symmetry. There aren't enough many variables. If you go to three variables, if you go to four variables, then... Yeah, okay. Well, uh, this one will, when it expands, it gives you a triangle. So it gives you the perpendicular here. You see, so that one would expand to uh, one triangle, which has area one. So all of this thing gives you Gaussian curvature one. This blade here, this blade, gives you the slopes which are described there. And as you see, the thing that appears at the top is a triangle. It's a degenerate hexagon, which has one unit. It has the edges of length one. Yes, so this is a hexagon like this. A degenerate hexagon, this is length 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Yes? Okay. Which is area 1. Okay, so you consider this plate as your human tensor. Yeah. And the tree are the spaces. Yeah, yeah. This tensor satisfies the symmetry. It does satisfy the symmetries, yes. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. There we are, so let's start. Should we start? <laughs> okay, so uh, we should, we need to start. Arthur, we couldn't, uh, I don't have an hour unless we, so we don't want to, uh, uh, if you need to go somewhere then, uh, so here's the, um, here is uh, at least what, uh, uh, let me, yes. Uh, so um, uh, that was the first idea. You see, we have these intertwiners. The next part is uh, how, um, I mean, how do we have uh, a higher matrix? Act so. I, what I wanted to define to the plan today was to show how a higher matrix, how a matrix unit, acts on on uh, the on these intertwiners. Yes. So there. Yeah. Uh, can I? I mean, we're, it's only the us, and if you don't have, uh, yeah. 
Uh, otherwise, it will not be mentioned at all. So we'll have a higher representation without higher representations. Okay, wonderful. Uh, abs I'm absolutely, I'm up to it, but uh, I mean, uh, I, I suppose, yes. Look, we can continue. Uh, I, I think I told you once, you know, at some point I gave an undergrad course and I never checked the things, look, and I didn't know when the course is finishing. So the last lesson was conics, which is you're normally skipped in calculus. So it turned out that we had, the students told me we have an extra week. So then I did more and more conics. Then it turned out we had still an extra week. So then I did more and more and more conics. And at the end, all those students were absolute expert in, experts in conics. <laughs> exactly, so here. Uh, the higher. Okay, so let's at least uh, let's let's uh, at least uh, start now with uh, something. So uh, here's uh, the the reason why I want to do something right now. Uh, yeah, we record it. Sorry. Oh, you have to be somewhere. Okay, okay. We we won't uh, record it, or we'll ask. Yeah, we. We, we uh, uh, what, what, should, what should we do? So, if you can finish in five minutes, I will wait another five minutes. Aha, uh -huh. okay, in any case, at least in five minutes, we should do the outline of, uh, of what we want to do, uh, which is the following. Um, we take the, uh, we take SL2, over SLN, so with underlying SLN. Now this is a simplex, and, uh, and uh, here at the base, we're going to have, so there's a base here, there's a simplex in the base, so here there are N minus one directions, uh, and uh, uh, so here there are labels from one up to n, and here we have the label zero for the uh, for the top. And what we uh, what we will have uh, in the bottom is an uh, so the length of the the size of the edges is two. So we have something like this, a two uh, two by two uh, simplex, and in that case. Uh, what we have in the base are uh, blades which are of the following type. So if you go back to the definition of blades, you can see that the blades are, of, are exactly one of these special hyperplanes. Namely, they, uh, they separate the coordinates into two. So this particular one is x, one, two, is equal to x. So the coordinates of the simplex are something like 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, and so on. And this is x1, 2 is equal to x. Uh, so it's xs is equal to x is equal to 1. Yes, where s is a subset of 1 to n. So basically, uh, every blade here separates the coordinates into two. You see here you have the coordinates separated into one, two, and three, four, and the blade is a square, the cut, yes? Uh, that is actually the motivation for these uh, special hyperplanes from which we build the whole theory. And uh, so these are the ones in the base. So what you have in the base is an intertwiner, and out of this intertwiner, you grow blades. So remember, this is exactly what we did in the Gelfand settling. And the way to grow, so if you have uh, here in the base, if you have S, the hyperplane S, which we'll just call S. S is a subset. So uh, in this case, for instance, that would be two, four. 
and one three. So this is this, this hyperplane between two four and one three. So S and S prime. So this is a hyperplane. You grow it by adding. So you see, for instance, an edge here on the base can grow either in a square or in a triangle. Do you see here on this side it grows in a square, on this side it grows in a triangle. What you have is that you have at the bottom, let's say, one, two, and three. This is the blade that separates the, co the vertices, one, two, and three. This is this blade here. And it can grow either in a triangle or in this direction or in a square in this other direction. So it grows either to zero, one, two, and three, which is a triangle, or to one, two, and zero, three. Zero is a tip. So uh, this is a square. So this, this is, uh, so the way they grow in this case is exactly by adding zero on one side or on the other. So this is in any number of coordinates. And by the way, these internal blades, uh, there is a formula which uh, I uh, intended to do on Friday, actually, in the, at the beginning of the lesson, just to connect it to usual things, showing that these blades give you the formula for, I mean, show the formula for the uh, uh, vial, uh, uh, for the Wigner 3Js and 6Js, yes? They count exactly factorials of such blades. And so we have now these blades, and the idea is the following. Uh, what we want to do in the, what, what we uh, did in the Gelfand settling case was we had wires. Remember, this wire was E1, and this wire was E2. So you had a number, if you take them with multiplicity, you'll have E1 to the K, E2 to the N minus K, yes? Where N is a multiplicity here at the base. So, yes? And uh, these are the vectors of the standard representation of SL2. And what we want is to do the higher analogs exactly of these, uh, of these, which will be some nice tunnels, yes? And then express the, uh, the, the, uh, we translate a matrix unit into tunnels. So a matrix unit just tells you how to build tunnels, so it tells you how to bend these and show exactly the operators that, uh, that do this bending in the simplest case, which is uh, analogous to uh, V to the wedge K in the usual case, yes? So in that case, you'll have a, a tree, so my five minutes are almost over. So in this case, what you have is, you see you start here with a generator, which looks exactly like this, yes? And you grow it going in the six, in the various directions. It will keep, because of the conservation, it would keep exactly the shape, the same directions here. So it would grow with the, the leaves arranged in the same direction. Yes, that's by the conservation. And in that case, so we are now not in SL2, but SLN, so this is divided into many. Uh, I, I can we can describe the operators for bending this. Yes, and out of those operating for bending this, which are very interesting, I mean, they, they give you new structures in algebra as well. Out of those operators, you can build the, uh, you can map every matrix unit to a way to, to tunnels which bend the leaves. So these leaves are a vector of the higher representation. Yes? So the basis of the higher representation is made of intertwiners. That's the idea. So the, young, the higher young tableaus, young diagrams are intertwiners. Yes? Out of these, you grow these, these uh, vegetables, which you bend then with a higher, higher matrix. Yes? And uh, if you want just the invariant vectors, the vectors which are invariant to bending, these are the uh, uh, Wigner 3J symbols. Yes? But uh, which are computed only for when the edge is two, and this gives a ni nice proof of that. 
Uh, however, that's very restrictive. If you have an action of tunnels and all you want is one invariant vector, that's very restrictive. So the higher theory allows you to work with everything. Yes, so not just with intertwiners, but also non-intertwiners between three representations. Yes, so, so take all the maps between three representations and act on those. That's what the higher representation does. So it, it uh, correlates, it correlates uh, things. So, so if we would make it, say, into manifolds, it would give us uh, a connection between three different manifolds. And amazingly, I saw uh, various things among them, the hexagon with pluses and minuses in talks about the uh, mirror uh, symmetry. There is constructions in mirror symmetry. Uh, so it's, it's quite possible that, uh, that uh, these higher things act on, on, uh, on, such, uh, on such things, uh, which are now at the, on the very edge of mathematics.